in this 3D scene, we can see the thoracic vertebrae at different levels with uh, vertebrae from transitional regions named T1 and T10 and uh, typical uh, thoracic vertebra, uh, which is T5 in this case. So uh, let's start with the typical uh, thoracic body, vertebral body, uh, that uh, conventionally has this heart shaped from a uh, superior perspective. And uh, we can see, if we move towards the upper level, that the diameters and dimensions are, are going to change from upper to lower levels. And that's that's uh, the reason of this characteristic shape, which um, is due to the in increase on the surface of the end plates, uh, mainly the increase on the anterior uh, to posterior dimensions. And later on uh, inferior levels, there's a general increase on the dimensions, acquiring uh, more uh, lumbar morphology. Uh, if we move posterior, and posteriorly we see the pedicles is uh, outlined as uh, number two. So the pedicles are gonna have initially a more oblique uh, projection and then are gonna tend to get um, stronger and have a more parasagittal projection on inferior inferior levels and that's also uh, gonna modify the spinal canal or the vertebral canal in which we, we see that it tends to be smaller and more rounded on uh, inferior levels compared to the superior ones. Some of the characteristics of uh, the uh, thoracic vertebral bodies is that the they have uh, the mifacets, which are serve as um, articulations with uh, the ribs, at least the most uh, medial articulations with the ribs. There's a, a superior and inferior demifacet on a typical uh, thoracic vertebral body. And there's another lateral articulation, which is the costal tubercular facet, which lies at the anterior aspect of a transverse process. So we can identify, again, superior and inferior demifacet on T5, as well as uh, demifacet, a superior demifacet of a, a more uh, that resembles the superior demifacet of T5 on uh, T1, and uh, a very um, small inferior demifacet, again, on uh, T1. If we move towards L5, we can identify again a superior demifacet and identify an inferior demifacet that uh, is uh, has a, a smaller surface compared to T5. Now, seeing the transverse processes, we see how the transverse process of C1 of T1 uh, has a more superior projection, whereas the uh, transfer process of T5 has a more horizontal projection. It tends to get uh, broader and uh, and uh, shorter. And if we move towards um, inferior towards the inferior level, uh, we see that it goes considerably uh, shorter and uh, also thicker. Now identifying the uh, laminae uh, and the parse interarticularis, we see that the lamina of T1 has a more horizontal projection, whereas the lamina of uh, T5 tends to get uh, shorter and have a more vertical projection. And when we uh, visualize the lamina of uh, T10, we see that it's really uh, short compared to uh, T1. The superior and inferior articular processes on all at different levels tend to be uh, or to have a more a vertical projection, 
uh, and uh, it, they're usually are matching the superior and inferior segments as we can see again from T1 that tends to go a little bit more anterior uh, and see on uh, T5 and again T12 T10 and in defining the most posterior projection which is the spinous process at uh, an inferior level we see that the spinous process gets uh, shorter and have a it's like posterior or horizontal projection uh, whereas uh, on, in this typical uh, spinous process of the thoracic uh, region we see that it tends to be uh, has a long projection and uh, runs in a more vertical fashion and uh, we see T1 that has a long spinous process and has a more horizontal projection um, let's remember as well that uh, sometimes this even this tends to get a, even a more posterior projection than uh, C7 so uh, that's the overview of the different morphology of the thoracic vertebrae.